Good morning. Welcome to Stephen Green Baptist Church. Uh, it's so wonderful to have you join us for worship this morning. Uh, real quick, if you are a guest, uh, there should be, if you're here with us, there should be a, a card in the back of the pew. Uh, you can fill that out, drop that in the offering plate in the back of the sanctuary, or you can just put that in, the, in our hand, or uh, you can even drop it in the drop box over for the office, and we would love to be able to connect with you and uh, learn how we can pray for you. Uh, if you're joining us online, uh, welcome. We want you to be able to make a comment. Let us know you're there. Uh, don't ghost us. We, we want to know you're here. But we have a few announcements, as always, just to, just to start us off. The flowers are placed in the sanctuary this morning to the glory of God by the flower committee. They always look wonderful. Even when they're not real, they're great. Our in-home member of the week is Jean Varnador. Hi, Jean. We uh, know that you tune in with us, and we just encourage everybody, if you would, uh, you might reach out to her, let her know you're praying for her, and give her some words of encouragement. If you are interested in helping with the nursery, please contact Sharon Brown. Uh, her email is right there, uh, or you can contact the church office and, and get a hold of her that way. Young adults... I don't think we're meeting at the parsonage today. It says we will, but I, I think we're, we're going to have to delay that. But if you want to come uh, talk to Sharon or I, we can, we can definitely explain that to you. The youth will meet today at First Baptist Church at 630. And I went there last week, and boy, they were having a good time. Wednesday, 6 p.m., Prayer meeting. We are going through the book of Galatians. We would love to have you join us. It is never too late to get right into the middle of Galatians. May 5th, that is Thursday, 12 o'clock noon, the National Day of Prayer uh, at Fortune Springs Park. If you bring a lawn, lawn chair, uh, this is a National Day of Prayer, obviously, that uh, everybody across the nation is called to come Pray for our country, pray for our world, and boy, do we need prayer right now more than, I mean, I would say more than ever, but we've always needed it. But there is certainly a lot to pray about, and I'm going to be out there with a few other ministers, and we're just going to be praying over uh, just about anything you could think of, praying for our community, praying for our schools, praying for uh, our country, and, and everything that's going on in the world. So if you would like to join us, uh, Fortune Springs Park at noon on Thursday. Now, if you know of any high school or college graduates, please let us know at the church office so that we uh, can honor them. We we definitely we we have a you know we have a name on the list so far, but we don't want to miss anybody. We want to be able to celebrate with you, everybody who is uh, graduating. Our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. The goal was $1,000, given to date 1170 exceeded that goal even before Easter. Awesome. I'm blown away. VBS, fast approaching. We are very, very excited, uh, but this year, VBS, June 26th through the 29th. And the theme is Spark Studios preschool to sixth grade, and we're still in need of workers, and so if you would like to volunteer for VBS, please contact Jennifer, <laughs> and uh, you, she, will, she will get you plugged in. Uh, first meeting is May 16th at 6. Mark your calendars. It's going to be a fun ride. We're gonna, you're going to do a great job. We're going to have a good time. And then I also wanted to let you know there will be uh, a short matter of business following the service, just some information, I believe. Do we have any other announcements? All right, let's go to the Lord. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, what joy it is to be in your house this morning. Lord, we, we thank you for just the, the promise that where two or more are gathered in your name, there you are also. And we know that you are meeting with us this morning. And we 
not only invite you, you are the point of this service, Lord. May it, may, it, may all the, the business, all of the, the things that we, we brought in carrying this whole week, may it all fade away as we come to worship you. May, may it not just be to come here a, a clever speech and go home, Lord, may it truly be that we are connecting with you this morning and we are worshiping you, that we are experiencing you. And Lord, we pray that you would be with all the other churches that are meeting right now this morning, that you would bless them as well in their services. And may you get all the glory because you deserve it. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. Well, it's just us again. If you're out there in TV land, if you are somebody you know, plays the piano, get in touch with the church office and let us know. We might need your services sometimes, like this morning. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to Praise the Lord without the piano, because we are good at doing that. Our first, our first hymn, our call to worship is Surely the Presence, 158. Stand with me, please, and we'll sing this through twice. And it is. We feel his presence. We're singing praise to him. Our first hymn is number 91, Don't Go By Your Bosom, It's Not Right. Between me and Chris, we got numbers messed up. I don't know which one of us it was. <clears throat> because I had surely goodness and mercy, and I had that other number down too, so it might have been my blip. Doesn't matter. We got it fixed. Number 91, surely goodness and mercy. Okay.
item number 374. The longer I served him. I'm going to sing all of this one. <laughs> Ethan picks on me because he says we never sing the middle verse. Well, there's not a middle verse on this one, so we're going to sing them all. Okay. Uh, the longer I serve them. Okay? We'll sing our doxology. Now, I am often struck by just how wonderful that hymn, Surely Goodness and Mercy Will Follow Me. Now, I'm convinced that's a Baptist hymn. Even if it's not, it's ours. We'll make it our own. But it is that that passage of Scripture, the, the, the psalm it comes from, one of the beautiful things that I love to remember about that is the, the surely, it is a certainty. And the, the goodness is God's loving kindness, his has said, and his mercy. And when it says it will follow me, the image is chase me down. His goodness, his love, his mercy chases us down. In my brain, I, I get the image of a, 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 you know, leopard or some kind of cheetah chasing down its prey. And says, that's what God's loving and mercy does to us. And so I can't, I can't sing that without really, truly taking it down of what a blessing it is to have God's goodness and mercy in our lives. Well... If you will please turn to Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. In uh, 2010, 
I know it was about 12 years ago, it was discovered that the British Royal Marines in Afghanistan were suffering an alarming number of ankle and spine injuries. As it turns out, the soldiers, what they would do is they would go and they would drop on their patrols. They would go and they would drop to their knee every few yards. They would look around with their weapon in hand, and then they would stand up, go a few more yards, and repeat the process. And over a period of time, in repeating this process in 122 degree heat, they were carrying 145 pounds of equipment on their back. More than 20 pounds heavier than U.S. troops at the time, and almost double the average of what the British soldiers were carrying just 30 years prior. Each soldier could carry the burden for a time, but eventually it would overcome even those in fit condition. They would sprain an ankle, a disc in their back would degenerate and become bulging, and they would be taken out of service and put on medical leave. Plans were, of course, once this was discovered, they, plans were made to make the equipment pack a little bit lighter, which they made it about 30 pounds lighter. But still, the true burden is not the weight of the pack, it's how long and the conditions that you are carrying it in. I suspect most of us this morning are carrying some kind of burden. There's some kind of weight on our shoulders, on our back. And we may have been carrying it for a very, very long time. It may be causing some distress, maybe even causing some fractures. Maybe it's something you would normally be able to carry, but the environment you're in, you're in the heat. The environment you're in does not allow you to carry it the way you normally would. Perhaps it's both. Maybe it is a heavy weight. Maybe it's a bad environment. May we look at the words of Jesus this morning and find encouragement. I want you to read with me Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. All of you, take up my yoke and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Lord, I ask this morning that you would illuminate this passage to us, that you would speak to our minds, speak to our hearts, speak to the very essence of our souls that we would understand what you are trying to convey in this passage. That we would be able to look at the burdens we carry. And when we come, present them to you. I ask that you would please connect this morning with each and every one of us. And may we learn what it is to really truly be your disciple. In Jesus' name. Amen. There are a few, a little bit of background, a few verses earlier, the context of this passage in Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. Uh, Jesus is in, in Galilee and he is approached by uh, all of these people who are, are he, the, the crowds are following him and he's going from city to city preaching the gospel, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And he is going around to all these cities in northern Israel, these small towns, so to speak. And he's doing miracles as he's going. And so he's attracting a very big crowd. But Matthew eleven twenty has a very interesting statement. It says, then he proceeded to denounce the towns where most of his miracles were done. Most of his miracles were done because they did not repent. 
He says, woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. If the miracles that were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes long ago. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than you. And you, Capernaum. This is where Jesus did most. That's where he started his ministry, pretty much. For you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were done to you in you had been done in Sodom, they, it would have remained until today. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. And so Jesus starts denouncing these cities because he did miracles in them and they did not repent. The people received the miracles, but they didn't receive the point of the miracles. They said, that's great. I love, I will accept and, and what you can do for me. But the message you're, you're you know, attaching to that, ah, that's fine. I don't want none of that. None of that. that actually involves me changing something about myself. No, thanks. Just heal us. We'll give you a thumbs up and be on our way. It is a regular saying of Jesus throughout the Gospels. After he heals somebody, what does he say? Go and sin no more. He always calls them to repentance. Always. Yet here he discovers that while he has certainly caused a stir among the people of Galilee with his hands, his words have failed to penetrate the heart. And so he passes judgment upon them. Now, it is very interesting that Chorazin, uh, I wish I had uh, been able to find the picture to pull it up, but their synagogue, the synagogue in Chorazin, has etched into the side of the synagogue wall the face of Medusa. Can you imagine somebody coming and defacing your church and yet they've established the face of some other god, some other myth on the side to the point that it was built into the foundation. And you get a picture of what he's dealing with, this religious establishment has become corrupt. And it's a synagogue, kind of. And so he's using these strong words, woe to you, it'll be better, better for Sodom and Gomorrah than for you, because even they didn't do this. Jesus then in verse 25 starts to pray. He starts a prayer. He says, At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, because it was your good pleasure. All things have been entrusted to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son desires to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. All of you take up my yoke and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for yourselves for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He says, Lord, you have revealed things to infants, spiritual infants. What has he revealed? So you can know God. that you can know God who is far above our understanding, who is so completely different from us and yet we can come to know Him because He is revealing Himself to us. In the, John explains it in the very person of Jesus, John 1.18. He is the explanation of the Father. And so Jesus is praising God that this is not, salvation is not offered just to the intellectuals. In fact, the intellectuals, they're, they're missing it. It's not just offered to the wealthy. In fact, they're missing it. It's not just 
offered to the people who are popular or the people who have power. In fact, many of them are missing it. He's saying, this is free for all. I offer this to you, to these infants that are getting it. The foolish things shame the wise. This is not restricted, but this is an open invitation. And he offers that open invitation in this passage, come to me. He says, this call first is to come. First and foremost, you must draw near to Jesus. This is how it happens. There's a similar point in John 14, verse 6, where he says, Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. And yet here he puts it uh, in a warmer presentation. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Did you know that Jesus is the one who can give you rest? The only one. He's the only way to find true rest. And the invitation here is offered like a water hose after a football game in August. You don't care if that water's 85 degrees. It's water. It's the only water you have. You're drinking it. Somebody who played football, I didn't really care. You know, you, you, it's water. You want it, right? We are all invited to come. And yet this water is refreshing. All are invited. Come all who are weary and burdened. Jesus is the only one with the solution to the burdens and the weight that we carry in this life. So we're invited to come. We are invited to take. What does he say here in this passage? Come to me all you are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. All of you take up my yoke. After responding to the initial call, you must decide whether or not to take up his offer. You heard him. And his offer is to replace your burdens with his. And this is the part where we start to have a problem. Because it requires a response. It requires us to say, is this really an invitation I want to accept? Is this something I want to to take up? And it might be that just like those crowds in the cities that Jesus has just rebuked, it is so easy to come to Jesus as a novelty and say, oh, I want you to heal me. I want you to make my life better. I want you to just, you know, make everything kind of go with the flow. And then I'll take it from here. He goes, can you just, you know, get rid of my burdens and then, you know, give me a clean slate and I'll start from here. The problem here is, what is the cause of your burdens? You. You're the one who put the burdens on your back. You say, well, somebody else put that burden on my back. Well, you found yourself in this position. And he's saying, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to just give you a clean slate. That, there's a message that comes with these miracles. So don't miss what he is saying. Perhaps the problem is that we actually have to take our burdens off in order to give them to him. And much like Stockholm Syndrome, we have grown used to carrying these burdens to the point that we feel almost weird. We have a, 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 you know, identity problem if we don't have these burdens on our back because it is a part of us. I used to think that there were a lot of people out there who had a lot of drama in their lives and I couldn't understand why they kept having drama in their lives. And then all of a sudden one day I realized that some people, not everybody, but some people have grown so accustomed to having drama in their lives when they don't have it, they will start it. They will put burdens on themselves because they don't know what to do otherwise. To actually take our burdens off and lay them at the feet of Jesus.
They cease to become our burdens. But there's something else that happens here. We are to take up his burdens. In our human condition, we can only carry a weight for so long and we start to get comfortable carrying such a weight. We start to expect it to be there. And when we repent of our sin and we lay it at Jesus' feet, we, we, keep, we have to take up his righteousness. And yet the problem is we keep taking up our own sin and saying, no, I want to go back to this. I'm comfortable with this. He says, that's a heavy burden. You can carry that for a little while, but it will eventually break your legs. It will eventually break your back. All the while, the burden wearing on our joints. And it's disqualifying one person at a time, over time. trying to carry a weight that is unsustainable under our own power. And Jesus says, come and take my burden. He says, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. All of you take up my yoke and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for yourselves. Do you have a burden this morning? Do you have a weight on you what have you been carrying what did you bring here perhaps have you been carrying your own weight or have you been carrying the weight that Jesus has offered you must respond to not respond is a response he says all all who are weary and burdened come to me take my yoke upon you But of course, when you do take off the burdens, that's when you really truly start to realize just how much was on you. I don't know. I don't know. I might be the only person that when you when you take a vacation or when you even have just, you know, a little bit of time to take a breath. It takes a few days to really start to realize just what you are really carrying. You go, oh, this feels good. Why? Oh, Man, I was really in deep. <laughs> Sometimes, by the time you, I don't know if I'm the only one. I could be speaking, you know, I don't know if the rest of you understand this. <clears throat> I get to the end of my vacation some years when I get them, and I say, you know, I'm just starting to feel like me again by the time I have to go back. This wasn't long enough. This needs to be a little bit longer because I'm... <laughs> I just got this weight off of me, and now I'm headed back into the thing that caused it. (laughs) Y'all aren't a burden to me. I love you. (laughs) But we have to recognize what your true condition is under this weight in order to be able to have something to do about it. You can't take care of something you don't recognize You can't take care of an issue that you are turning a blind eye to and saying that's fine. You have to address it. And it's going to cause some distress because guess what? If you stand up after taking a big heavy weight off your shoulders, your back's going to creak. It's going to strain. It's going to show you some pain. We have to look at our condition that we are weary and burdened. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened. We have to recognize we're tired. Well, what does this what does this simply mean? This word weary it means that you are worn out from hard work, and this is working to the point of exhaustion. This is working to the point where you are starting to fall down. You've been going all day, all week, and you need rest. Think about Israelite society that they come from slavery in Egypt. And one of the the Ten Commandments, one of the, the rules that was put on them is that they must Sabbath. They must have at least one day where they take off to rest and come to the Lord and and focus on worshiping Him. 
Look at who's saying this. It's God who is saying this, the, the God who is leading them out of Egypt. And here Jesus says, I am gentle and humble in heart. We have a gentle and humble God. He didn't bring the Israelites out of slavery just to lead them into a new type of slavery. He brought them out and said, I demand that you rest. Take a break. You need it. Maybe you are exhausted because you've been dealing with things like doctor's appointments, one after the other. They just keep getting longer. There becomes more and more of them the older you get, I'm finding out. Maybe you are trying to bounce around and hit all the sports that your kids and grandkids are playing. Man, it's exhausting, right? Maybe your job is just putting one thing after another on you and it's stressing you out and you say, I can't do this alone. Have you been diligently trying to serve others, but as the situation progresses, you find yourself getting tired faster? I'm trying to do the Lord's work and it's, it, it's, it's draining me. I'm just calling it like I see it here. I know a lot of us are still worn out from the year 2020. By the way, this is your notice. We are almost halfway to 2023. That's three years. Of... Stop talking, Ethan. Or maybe it's just not that you are tired and worn out. Maybe it's that you have this burden still upon you. And deep down, it is wearing on your soul. You are carrying a heavy load. And it doesn't matter whether you get that physical rest or not because that burden that you are carrying is just going to exhaust you. I heard a, a saying from somebody much smarter than me, smarter and wiser than me, that said, your time off isn't going to change if the problem is how you spend your time on. If there's something that has riddled you with guilt, these burdens that have become unbearable and you wonder, how could I ever get rid of this? You might be wondering if God could ever forgive you for something or what that would even take. Can I give you some encouragement that even though you are carrying a heavy load, Jesus offers that you take it off and take up his load. Matthew 23 Verse 4, Jesus is condemning the Pharisees. He's, you know, towards the end of his ministry. And so he's getting kind of honest with them. 23 verse 4. I'm going to start in 2. The scribes and the Pharisees are seated in the chair of Moses. Therefore, do whatever they tell you and observe it, but don't do what they do because they don't practice what they teach. They tie up heavy loads that are hard to carry and put them on people's shoulders, but they themselves aren't willing to lift a finger to move them. They do everything to be observed by others. They enlarge their phylacteries, lengthen their tassels. They love the place of honor at banquets, the front seats at the synagogues, greeting in the marketplaces, and to be called rabbi by people. He says we have these religious leaders that are going around, and what they're doing is they are putting burdens upon other people, and they're saying, yeah, you go do this. Well, do you do this? No. Hey, you need to read your Bible more. You need to read it for at least half an hour every day. You need to sit there and say, you know, 30 prayers and pray for all of these people on this list. And then the next thing you need to do, you need to come help us with this. He says, though, you're putting up burden after burden after burden. He's saying, yet they don't do it themselves. Well, first of all, I will say, Leaders lead better by example. But what Jesus is saying here is, well, what's interesting about these Pharisees is some of them were so serious about their, their lists of rules and everything that they would do, they would just tithe 10% of their spice rack. Can you imagine going home, pulling out the cumin and saying, you know, 10%, what is that? Measure that out. They're so serious about something, and Jesus is saying they're putting all of these, this load on these people. 
You can almost see the people going up to the temple to worship the Lord, and they've got their backs full of this stuff, carrying up a giant hill, saying, you know what, you need to offer a gigantic sacrifice to the Lord. That will be more pleasing to him. These people are finding ways to amass power, congratulate themselves, and bully people around. And they're placing ridiculous burdens on other people's backs. There's a reason Jesus aggravated the Pharisees. He would not submit to their attempts to place more burdens on him. And so in order to take off our burden, we must first reflect and understand what we are carrying. We must recognize what our burden is. And we must recognize what Jesus' burden is. Reflection upon your condition prepares you for submission. Because all of this is, come to me all who are weary, and I will give you rest. We must submit to the call he has given. And we must take it up. Jesus uses the illustration of a yoke. Farmers would yoke two oxen together. It's just a simple device that tethers these two animals together and usually they would put a strong one with a weaker one and the intent here is that the weaker one is not going to be able to carry their weight and so if they are tethered to a stronger one what is going to happen is the strong one is going to compensate and carry the the load until the younger one can learn the weaker one can learn and become strong enough Jesus is the stronger one. He says, come, give me your load. Take up mine. Be tethered to me. And we, I will carry your burden. The rest that he has in mind is a rest that enables the worker to go back to the task with renewed vigor. This is not God saying, take away the burden. Remember, we take up his burden. But he's saying, no, my burden, it's easy, it's light. In fact, he is, you know, saying even, you might be able to say, he is making it comfortable. The way it sits, fits right. I don't know if any of you have uh, ever tried to carry or tried to do some work in some bad boots or use some bad gloves or use something that is not quite that comfortable. You ever worn some pants that are a little too tight? It doesn't fit comfortably. It doesn't fit well, and it's going to cause problems. In fact, it's going to increase your burden because all of a sudden you're going to be in pain the whole day. Well, this is how Jesus completes it. Come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. All of you take up my yoke and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He says, learn from me. Discipleship. Jesus is, of course, speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to those who are following him. And he's saying, learn from me. You're carrying this burden. You've got to take that off. You've got to put my burden upon you. This burden that the Pharisees are putting on you religiously of all these things. He says, take that off. Put my burden upon you. Well, what is your burden? What is Jesus' burden? Matthew 4.19, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. The burden is follow me. Imitate Christ. Follow him. Put your faith in him. All of the rules and law, plus rituals and superstitions, cultural landmines that you could step on, always wondering whether you're going to offend someone no matter what you do. 
the burden of being under Roman rule, under Caesar, all of these things, being in slavery, being enslaved spiritually and physically. That burden placed upon these people. And we think about the burdens that we face each and every day. We're worried about being enslaved physically and spiritually and intellectually. And we've got to come bring it to Jesus and say, you, your burden is easy. Your burden is light. It is comfortable. I will follow you. Become a disciple. A true disciple. And I will give you rest. This, there's a quotation here of Jeremiah 6, verse 16. It says, find rest for yourselves. I want to go to this passage. This is what the Lord says. Stand by the roadways and look. Ask about the ancient paths. They're talking about wisdom. Which is the way to what is good? Then take it. And find rest for yourselves. But they protested. We won't. There is wisdom out there for you. And the Lord offers it. And Jesus is the author and personification of wisdom. And he offers it freely. Find rest. And yet the response then is we won't. And the response we don't want to have this morning is we won't. Yet that is what Jesus has talked about. The cities that he's performed these miracles in have said we won't. He offers recovery, refreshment. And to anyone who is burdened, he is saying he will refresh you. Notice how he doesn't say, I'll point you in the right direction. Good luck. He doesn't say, hey, I'll give you advice on a map to find it. Go down here, you know, go on a treasure hunt wild goose chase. He says, no, I will give you rest. Notice this is something that you cannot do for yourself. You cannot find rest on your own is what he is saying. He says, I will give it to you. I am the only one who can give it to you. He's talking about a type of rest we are incapable of obtaining under our own power. Rest. We think about the cessation of labor, of Sabbath, but he is talking about refreshment of the spirit. Our burdens fit Jesus very well. This quote, a burden carried in love is always light. Jesus offers us a rest beyond just ceasing mere labor. He offers a refreshment of the soul. That means you can go back to that labor with renewed vigor. You can do what he has called you to do. Follow him. Obey him. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus offers refreshment, but he first requires submission. He first requires that you come and you accept that offer, that he is Lord. He cannot be Lord. (laughs) If he is not Lord of your life, of all of your life, he's not Lord at all of your life. He requires everything. I think of all of these rules uh, that we've been putting on children in our culture all of these things that we've expected them to be able to carry. I mentioned uh, on Wednesday night, there's a a quote from Corey Ten Boom that has been going around where she was explaining that she was on a train with her father and she asked him a question, what is sex sin? And he doesn't respond immediately. He kind of then looks at her and then looks down at the luggage that they are carrying. And this is his stuff that he would use for business. It was full of, I believe, watches. And he would, he said, Corey, when we get off the train, can you pick up, pick that up and take it off the train for me? And she got down and tried to pick it up and she said, I can't, it's too heavy. And he goes, yes, because you are not ready for it. 
will you trust me to carry it for you until you are? There's some things our children are not meant to carry. There's some things that we as God's children are not meant to carry. And he's coming to us saying, you don't have to carry this. Give it to me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. I think of my boy. When I, we put him to bed, so, some nights he, he wants to just sit with us before he can go to sleep and just calm down. He finds comfort in our presence. And it's because he doesn't have the burdens that we place on ourselves. He doesn't have these burdens. He is able to fall asleep because all he knows is that I am there with him. Jesus is not calling people to lives of careless ease. He's calling us to lives of joyful service. Instead of a master who puts burden upon burden upon you, Jesus calls us to a service that we can delight in and find joy in and say, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And so I ask again, what burdens do you find in your own life that need to be lifted from you that you can bring to the Lord and say, I give you this burden? Not to then walk away and say, hey, I'm scot free, but to say, Lord, I'm going to follow you. Your burden is much easier to carry. What do I mean? Sometimes there are people that you find that you have trouble forgiving. And maybe the issue is that you say, I can never forgive that person, not ever. But the Lord has forgiven them. Place that burden upon him. Take up his burden. It's light. Maybe you say the situation, somebody is undermining my authority and I just can't let them deal with this. I I can't let them get away with this. I've got to get them back. It's your burden. Give it to Jesus and take up his burden. Follow him. I invite you this morning that if you have a burden, come place it before the Lord. You can come do it by praying up here. You can pray in your seat. You can pray at home. But the point is, don't carry it any longer if you don't have to. Give it to the Lord. Jesus. May we not just understand what it is to place our burdens at your feet. May we truly be challenged to take up your yoke, your comfortable, easy, light burden to do the work that you have ordained for us to do as Ephesians puts out. You have created us for good works so that we may walk in them. We pray that you would humble us so that we would imitate you and be gracious and humble. Lord, may we not incur your wrath because we don't listen, but may we become your family. Lord, we lay it at your feet. We give these burdens to you. And we serve you joyfully. In your holy name we pray. Amen. of commitment this morning is him 435 just as I am stand please
I'm sorry, I could hear y'all singing. I could sing that three more times, but I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> I want to remind y'all, youth tonight at 6.30 at First Baptist Church. Wednesday night prayer meeting at 6, we would love to have you. Uh, we have a, a quick little uh, business matter to discuss. But if you're a guest with us, you can feel free to, to leave at this point. Thank you all. You can be seated. Uh, just one minute. Uh, in uh, two weeks.